One of the most successful tools when used in the wrong way. Music forms a part of God's worship in the courts above. And we should endeavor in our songs of praise to approach as nearly as possible to the harmony of heaven. All right? Xu Qing, the great philosopher, said, For changing people's manners and altering their customs, there is nothing better than music. All right? Butius, the famous Roman philosopher, 500 years after Christ, Music is part of us. It either ennobles us or degrades our behavior. One of two things. There is no neutral plane when we're talking about music. It's either uplifting us or it's taking us down. Confucius, 500 years before Christ. If you want to know if a people are well governed and if their laws are good or bad, examine the music that it practices. Aristotle, music directly imitates the passions or state of the soul. When one listens to music that imitates a certain passion, he becomes imbued with that same passion. And if over a long time he habitually listens to, a, to the kind of music that arouses ignoble passions or negative passions, his whole character is shaped to an ignoble form. You see, music is the expression of emotion. That's why when we're in that rebellious stage in our life, I went through this stage in my life, you listen to music that sounds rebellious, that's dun 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 All right? Got that angry feel to it because you're angry about something. And so you listen to the angry music. And the more you listen to it, the more angry you become. It's very powerful. Music is very, very powerful. Socrates, when modes of music change, the fundamental laws of the state always change with them. Think about the laws that are, that are changing. I was just speaking with a man here before we started. It, talking, he's from San Francisco and talking about the laws that they've put into effect uh, you know, of, over homosexuality. And you can't even speak against it now. Laws start to change when modes of music change change and there has been an unprecedented change in music in just the last 50 years I mean you look at Elvis Presley and the music that he came out with and he was denounced from pulpits all over the country saying hey this is the devil's music and now that's child's play I mean what if Metallica would have come out first <laughs> or, or, or you know the Iron Maiden I mean, people wouldn't have known what to do with it. David Crosby from the, uh, uh, Crosby, Stills, and Nash told Rolling Stone magazine in 1981, I figured the only thing to do was to swipe their kids. I'm st I still think it's the only thing to do. But by saying this, I'm not talking about kidnapping. I'm just talking about changing the value system which removes them from their parents' world very effectively. The rock and roll industry is also called the counterculture revolution. They're countering the culture and trying to revolutionize the value system. This country was based upon Christian values. And they're trying to turn that upside down on, on its head. Mick Jagger from the Rolling Stones in the book The Secret Power of Mus Music says, we are moving after the minds and so are most of the new groups. They know this. They know that if they can captivate the mind, they can change the way we think and the way we, way, the way we make decisions. In the hands of Satan, temptation has become a science. He is the God of this world because the world has chosen him as its master. In his temptations of our first parents, Satan could not force them to transgress. He could only suggest allurements to sin. And the mind that is open to his suggestions is the medium through which he works to alert other minds. It's only through people that Satan can get anything done. And your mind opens in different, in, in these ways that we're, that we're talking about. It, hypnosis is opening that part of your mind that is meant for a, a, a certain purpose. Music does the same thing.
There are three categories in music. Now, this, is, this, this gets a little touchy uh, when you start talking about music. I think uh, there's a couple of things that, you know, you've you got to be careful with. Um, you, you don't want to touch someone's plate, right? Don't, don't mess with what I'm eating. You've got to be very careful when you're talking about the health laws and, and dietary issues. I think you need to be equally as careful when you're talking about music. It is a very personal thing, and, and we each need to choose on our own what is right and what is wrong, and we need to prayerfully do that. The three categories, and they affect us all in the same way, regardless of race, regardless of, of your, your customs and, and, and background, these three things affect us all in the, same, in the same way. When you listen to music that emphasizes melody, we listen with that part of our brain that is more concerned with the aesthetic, with the emotional, with the spiritual. You're listening with, your, with the spiritual side of your brain when you listen to melody. Harmony. Because of the complexity of harmony, you listen with the more intellectual part of your brain. And the third category is rhythm. Rhythm, you listen with, you, or it creates a physical response in the human organism. Okay? And all three of these things are in all music. I'm not saying that rhythm is bad. It's how it's used. So I'm going to kind of focus a little bit on this third category here, rhythm. When you accentuate rhythm, what happens when you accentuate rhythm? When you bring rhythm to the forefront and it's at the level of monotony. Remember, one of the fundamental key principles of hypnosis is monotony. You're staring at a flashing light. You're listening to repetitious instructions. Same thing happens when you listen to a repetitious beat that's at the forefront. When the beat's going, mm -ts, mm -ts, mm, just like in those commercials we just heard. It brings about a physical response in the human organism. That's why people dance. Anywhere a beat is emphasized. You can't do anything else but dance. You, you'll eventually start nodding your head or tapping your foot or something. Or possibly get up and start dancing. So question here, how far back does the history of modern popular music go and what modes of music can we put into the present popular music category? So I'm going to lump all these styles of music together now and they are all lumped together over this same fundamental element that they all use a monotonous, repetitious, syncopated beat. Okay? Blues, jazz, rock and roll, country, rock, metal, thrash, punk, house music, rap, rave, techno, calypso, reggae, whatever you want to call it. Any style of music that accentuates beat to the point of, hip, of repetitious monotony, they all share this common element. And they have a vital link to the ancient past which ties them all together. So what is that vital link that they all share? It's that very thing. It's, it, they have this repetitious, monotonous, syncopated beat. Syncopation in itself is not bad. It's how it's used. Syncopation happens in all styles of music. It's when some, an accent in music happens on the offbeat. It syncopates. But when it is syncopated at the level of monotony, this is where we, where we get into trouble. The worship aspect. Sun worship dates all the way back to Nimrod. Remember Nimrod and Semiramis. Nimrod's the one who started the building of the Tower of Babel. Nimrod and Semiramis. Uh, when Nimrod died, Semiramis said that he went up to the sun. And later on, she was impregnated by the sun. And she gave birth to the sun god, Tammuz. Okay? This is where sun worship began. And it is a link that links all systems of pagan worship together. There's sun worship in all of them. They all, there's elements of sun worship in each one. So how did pagan sun worship become integrated into our modern music forms? 